This is a video case presentation of a 24-year-old female who presents with normal healthy gingiva. Uh, outwardly appearance is it is pink, knife-like, uh, no bleeding upon probing. Uh, you can see that there's stippling in the gingiva. Um, for the most part, everything looks really, really healthy. This is the data taken from her perioprobing and clinical attachment loss. You can see there's not a lot going on here either. Uh, number 30 has got uh, a cal of 6 with a gingival margin uh, 5 millimeters and a periodontal depth of 1 millimeter on the lingual. Radiographic examination shows more of the same. Outwardly it appears uh, normal and in fact healthy. There's really no vertical bone defects, uh, loss of bone structure or circumferential defects that can be seen anywhere on the x-rays. However, when you use a microscope to help diagnose periodontal risk, it's a completely different story. What you're looking at is a phase contrast microscope view at 400 uh, times magnification and um, it's a very diseased mouth and of course the infection always precedes the symptoms or the the loss of attachment, uh, recession, and bone loss. And there's a lot going on here. She's got um, white blood cells fighting the infection, uh, loaded with spirochetes, which has uh, holistic uh, ramifications that exceed just the gum loss and bone loss that we would obviously see in the mouth as dentists. But um, obviously, as we move this slide around and look at the plaque sample, you can see she's teeming with spirochetes, too many to count, and she reports at least brushing um, once a day with over-the-counter products. This definitely illustrates the importance of using something in addition to just a perio probe when you're evaluating patients uh, periodontally. So, um, without looking at a microscope, how long would she have this condition before anything was really addressed here? In all reality, it would probably be way after the fact. So, um, what the patient elected to do was to have uh, CO2 laser therapy where we um, treat her gums uh, around the necks of the teeth and uh, basically I'm just walking CO2 laser around the um, crest epithelium because as it heals it uh, invaginates inwards into the pocket. I'm going to do that on the lingual, do it also on, uh, do it on the buccal and the lingual. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm just making little overlapping circles as I kind of traverse the uh, necks of the teeth and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to sink my t uh, the tip of the, of the laser into the sulcus and just kind of slowly walk it around the sulcus while I'm engaging the laser um, letting the energy from the laser just penetrate um, into the pocket depth where it's going to really evaporate um, tissue gingival tissue as well as uh, spirochetes and their cysts, a cyst form obviously. And I'm just showing this lower left quadrant here, but you're going to do this um, for the full mouth obviously. This is our post-operative slide. Um, we're viewing face contrast microscope slide at 400 power. Um, you can see there's some red blood cells that are in various places, uh, a little bit of an air pocket there uh, in the slide. <clears throat> and I can see a little brownian motion of some debris there, but I'm not really seeing the spirochetes anywhere on the slide uh, post-operatively. And so this is a repeat of a case presentation that I did uh, where basically I did the same thing, used a number of um, detergents and astringents to get rid of the spirochetes uh, such as oil pulling and, and baking soda and nothing really got rid of them, they kept coming back and so here um, we can see that we repeated our results there's really nothing going on here, the slide is dramatically different so that is two different patients 
with the same result and technique. Thank you for watching.